So there's this cool game I found a while ago called Cell Lab, which is a mobile app you can download. Basically, it's just a game about cells, but you can make the cells split into different types of cells and choose whether or not they are attached, such that they share nutrients between them. And there's a whole bunch of other different parameters you can affect. In this example, I am making one cell, which is sort of an egg that splits into a flagellocyte cell and a cell that eats the food off the petri dish. Together, they sort of create a creature, and I make the cell in just the front split off into the first cell, which creates another creature, and etc. So basically, I just created my own little creature, and when I plop the egg into a petri dish, it spreads throughout the entire dish as they consume the food on the plate. So let's say I want to make an improvement on this creature. Well, an obvious change we can make is by making a bit of an angle with the split. When the cell splits directly in front of it, it sort of loses its momentum and it takes extra energy to speed back up. So instead, when it splits at an angle, it redirects its momentum to a different direction and no energy is really lost. So overall, you can see that this is a superior flagellocyte creature. So what do you think will happen if I just place one egg of this genome? So after incubating it for no more than 5 seconds, you can see that virtually every flagellocyte creature inherits the split angle. I introduced a better genome, and it took over, making the older genome obsolete. This is natural selection. There are a bunch of different cells in this game. There are the sensory cells that can sense food in different directions and produce a chemical signal that you can make other cells respond to, like the flagellocyte. In this way, you can make these creatures swim towards the food. This cell is absolutely necessary for this environment, as the food is a lot more sparse. Before, I artificially created a better genome. However, there is also a mechanic in this game called radiation, which introduces random mutations analogous to that of biological life. When a cell splits, there might be a change due to some of the parameters. Sometimes it may even change the entire order of how the cell splits. Usually though, this just creates deformed creatures unable to reproduce, but occasionally it actually produces a beneficial genome which dominates the petri dish. I left this creature incubated for a few hours, and when I came back, I was honestly a bit surprised. The color change is inevitable and shows just how many mutations my cells went through, but one of the most obvious changes is the two cells in the front. I would think that having two cells would actually be detrimental as it would consume more energy, but evolution found that they can actually capture more food this way. You can even observe different races of this creature on the petri dish. There are slight color differences in the front cells. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's uh, pretty much how evolution works in the wild. Thank you guys for watching.